everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Engineering Student Experience Podcast. I'm Paul Nissenson at the Mechanical Engineering Department at Cal Poly Pomona. As I mentioned in the last episode, recently I had the opportunity to talk to local high school students who are attending a summer program called the STEAM Academy at Cal Poly Pomona. This program gives a few dozen high school students from the local community the opportunity to connect with other local high school students, meet students and faculty from Cal Poly Pomona, and collaborate with people in industry through hands-on projects. Students in this program are taught to not only consider how various current technologies work, but also to consider the design of the technology and its social impact. I will place the mission statement of the STEAM Academy in the show notes in case you're interested in learning more about that program. This was a great experience for me because I got to learn which topics these potential future engineering students would most like to hear about. Many of the high school students were confused about the differences between a college and a university. So I decided to make that the topic of today's episode. So what are the differences between a college and a university? Well, before I answer that question, I want to offer a couple caveats. First, everything that I talk about today applies to institutions of higher learning in the United States, because that's what I'm most familiar with and where most of my audience currently resides. Other countries may define college and university differently, Secondly, the definitions that I use for college and university will apply to the vast majority of institutions in the U.S., but there are thousands of colleges and universities in the United States, so it's possible there may be some exceptions out there. So with those two caveats in mind, let's begin. In our everyday life, people often use the terms college and university interchangeably, to refer to any institution of higher learning. I'm definitely guilty of doing this too, and I'm sure I've used those two words interchangeably many times on previous episodes, and I'll probably continue to do so in future episodes as well. For example, I have a niece who's in high school, and I might ask her something like, do you plan on going to college right after high school? Or what universities are you thinking about applying to? In both cases, I'm using the terms college and university to refer to any institution where my niece could earn an undergraduate degree, which is a two-year associate's degree or a four-year bachelor's degree. Even though these terms, college and university, often can be used interchangeably in everyday conversations to refer to any institution of higher learning, there are actually some important differences you should consider when you apply to an institution. In a college, Only undergraduate degrees, so associate's degrees or bachelor's degrees, are offered. Graduate degrees, such as master's degrees and PhDs, are not offered at colleges. And at this point, if you don't know all the differences between an associate's degree, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and a PhD, don't worry. We're going to cover the different types of degrees and what's required to earn them in a future episode. One of the most common types of college is a community college, which is often also called a junior college. Community colleges offer students the opportunity to earn credit toward a bachelor's degree for relatively low cost compared to most universities. Many students will first attend a community college for two or three years to complete their lower level coursework, possibly earning an associate's degree along the way, then transfer to another institution where they can complete a bachelor's degree. In my own department, a large fraction of our mechanical engineering students are transfers from California community colleges. The term college sometimes is used for trade schools as well. In a trade school, which are also called vocational schools or technical schools, you will receive practical training that will prepare you for entering the workforce in a very specific field, such as air conditioning repair, being an electrician, being a car mechanic, and many other fields. After finishing a trade school, you'll usually earn a certificate or possibly an associate's degree. Some colleges offer bachelor's degrees. For example, Harvey Mudd College, which is a very highly regarded college about 10 miles to the northeast of Cal Poly Pomona, focuses on undergraduate education. You can earn a bachelor's degree in engineering at Harvey Mudd, but no higher degrees than that. 
Now that we've covered most of the characteristics of colleges, let's move on to universities. A university is an institution that offers both bachelor's degrees and graduate degrees, such as master's or PhD. Some universities are more focused on undergraduate education and only offer bachelor's and master's degrees. These type of universities are sometimes called primarily undergraduate institutions because the vast majority of students are pursuing bachelor's degrees there. Other universities place a much stronger emphasis on research and offer bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and PhDs. These universities may have designations such as R1 or R2 depending on the amount of research activity at that university. For example, at my institution, California State Polytechnic University Pomona, which is shortened to Cal Poly Pomona, we offer bachelor's and master's degrees in many fields, but no PhDs. Most Cal Poly Pomona students are undergraduates who are pursuing a bachelor's degree, and we are considered a primarily undergraduate institution. In contrast, about 40 miles to the west of Cal Poly Pomona is the University of California, Los Angeles, probably better known to you as UCLA, which offers bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and PhDs. A much larger percentage of the UCLA student body is pursuing graduate degrees compared to the Cal Poly Pomona student body, and UCLA has an R1 designation indicating a very high level of research activity. In future episodes, we'll explore more of the differences between primarily undergraduate universities like Cal Poly Pomona and universities that place a much stronger emphasis on research, such as UCLA. Today's episode is just meant to help clarify the major differences between colleges and universities. Before we end today, there are three additional things you should keep in mind when researching whether to attend a college or a university. First, some universities will not have the word university in their name, but still may be quite prestigious. For example, the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, also known as MIT, and the California Institute of Technology, also known as Caltech, are among the most well-respected institutions in the world. If the term college or university is not in the name of the institution, the institution's website usually will tell you whether it's a college or a university. The second item to keep in mind is that the cost of tuition at a college or university can vary greatly depending on whether the institution is public or private. Public institutions are funded primarily by student tuition and the public, by state governments, while private universities are funded primarily by student tuition, endowments, and donations. As a result, private institutions are usually much more expensive to attend compared to public institutions, but they offer other characteristics that might make them more attractive, such as smaller class sizes. Even among public universities, the cost of tuition can vary greatly. At the time I'm recording this episode, the tuition at Cal Poly Pomona is about one-half the tuition at UCLA, but UCLA does offer more opportunities for getting engaged in cutting-edge research, it has famous sports teams, and many other features that might be attractive to a student. Finally, before we end today's episode, I want you to be aware that some universities also use the term college to refer to a group of departments that are related. For example, at Cal Poly Pomona, which I already mentioned is classified as a university, we have eight colleges, including the College of Engineering. And within the College of Engineering, there are seven engineering departments. We have the Aerospace Engineering Department, Chemical and Materials Engineering, Civil Engineering, Electrical and Computer Engineering, Electromechanical Engineering, Technology, Industrial and Manufacturing Engineering, and my very own Mechanical Engineering Department. In a future episode, we'll cover how typical universities are structured, but I wanted to just make you aware that the term college is often used for referring to a part of a university. All right, that's all for today. I hope this short episode helped you understand the major differences between colleges and universities. If you enjoyed this podcast, there are a few ways to support it. You can subscribe to the podcast using your favorite podcast app, such as Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play Music, Spotify, and many others. You can rate the podcast and leave comments on whatever app you use to listen to the podcast. 
And finally, you can help spread the word about the podcast by telling your friends, family, classmates, and whoever you think might benefit from this podcast. If you have comments about this episode, feel free to email me at T-E-S-E podcast at gmail.com and I'll place the email address in the show notes for you. I'll personally read each email and try my best to respond to all of them. Goodbye for now.